Yeah, as I was piling out there, I noticed they had their big Ray-Bans on, like, uh, you know, Bellucci and the Bruise Brothers. No two rescues are the same. But some stand out more. Now, over the years doing rescues, I see all different types of people, but I never thought I'd see the Blues Brothers drowning. <laughs> Edward and Leo, also known as Jake and Elwood, are brothers, but not from Chicago. They're actually on holiday from Brisbane. Uh, feel pretty comfortable. Oh, right? It's weird your first couple of times, but then you just get used to it. So you know, 500 kilometres north of Bondi, local uh, lifeguards are introducing Maxi to the bare facts of patrolling a nudist beach. So, Little Diggers is our nude beach, com commonly referred to as nudies. You do get a rip out in the corner there, mate. You surfed nudie before? Yep. You have to surf nude at nudies. Them's the rules. Maxie's learning there's a sucker born every minute. Hey, mate. Yeah. Hey, buddy. Sorry, mate, I've just been informed that you spat on a female. I didn't spit on a female. Well, you're intoxicated. He was on the back foot as soon as I got up to him. You're intoxicated. We have witnesses saying that you spat and kicked sand yeah. on her. Uh, I was trying to speak quietly, so I didn't draw too much attention. You and your mate can either get off the beach. Here we go. I thought he was going to try and have a swing. But I wasn't confronted or scared of him. This chick's lying to you. I don't know. Listen, 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 mate. The problem is. You know, you don't admit a lot of things in life, but before I get in my underwear, I get a spray tan. The lady with the pink thong was sitting there going out to sea, and she had her phone in her hand. I was like, Are you alright? She goes, Um. I think I need some help. Hold on to it. And she's kicking there. She's like got her iPhone wrapped in one of those waterproof cases, just sitting there on her pink thong, floating out to sea. Oh, classic. If only Nikolai had the woman's phone number. The message might have made it through. You can speak a lot of languages, can't you? I can. Hola. <laughs> Como estás? <laughs> Betty Gonzalez? Arriba. <laughs> Can't tell me one about this. This is our little secret. Well, what's that microphone up there? Nothing's on. Is the rip scary? Yeah, have you been caught in a rip? No. As Nicola's instructions are lost in translation, lifeguard and swimmer are quickly swept further from shore. I got to him and... I was trying to explain to him how to get on the board. He didn't really get it, so I tried to demonstrate, and he goes, oh, I see. And so he started hugging the board from underneath. <laughs> and I just thought, you know what, that's close enough, so. <laughs> Thank you. Min is from Taiwan. While his approach may be innovative, Min's underside board hug technique isn't helping him or Nicola make it back to shore. As Hoppo picks up more swimmers nearby, Min is offered the express service with Mario. <laughs> but this doesn't go to plan either. He just was sunk like a stone. <laughs> After almost 10 minutes since he first got in trouble, Min completes the 30 metre journey back to shore. Don't worry, just a very tired because I uh, I don't have exercise exercise in long time. Yeah. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Better luck. Thank, Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm going to relax. See you. <laughs> I wish I could go to relax. <laughs> Oblivious to the danger, all the men finally return to shore. At least half of them are wearing undies. Are you with that crew? No. Yeah, you are. No, no. Are you sure? Yeah. All right. <laughs> you <looks. laughs> You're going to go back and sit with them, are you? Then the group spontaneously breaks into dance. It's a full gypsy dance. Can't 
bunch of blokes having a good time. Yeah, you can't swim. Not a good swimmer. Uh, Don't yeah, swim yeah. down here. Yes. Dangerous. Yes. You drown. You'll die. You will die. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. In the end, the message is lost in translation. We're at Hey, just a guy with the bodyboard and those flippers, mate. If you keep paddling north. Minutes later, Lou and his mate are back unannounced. You know, like a lot of people come up to us for photo opportunities down here and I, I saw a guy that. come up to me with a camera and I thought, okay, yeah, quick photo. And I did the double look and like, oh my God, it's the same guy I just rescued. <laughs> it seems like Bondi's latest celebrity visitor has arrived. Charles like, oh, must be another celebrity. I wonder who this is. You would see today's celebrity on the cover of any magazines, but he does have a famous name. This is Hefner. Hefner? Like Hugh Hefner. Yeah, well, his mum na mum's name was Playgirl, so he got Hefner. <laughs> Two-year-old alpaca Hefner lives up to his name with the ladies and looks great in any selfie. <laughs> That's not my first alpaca I've seen, but it's definitely the first one I've seen on a beach. It's so random. Bring more, I say. Bring the herd. Herd. That was alpacas that they call. Maybe it's a pack of alpacas. <laughs> Hefner lives on a farm three hours south of Sydney. He's visiting Bondi on a day trip. Kids love him. And dogs, eh, curious. I see a lot of unusual things down at Bondi, so it never really surprises me what you see day in, day out down here. <laughs> He's my brother-in-law and he's my father-in-law. Yes. So um, we, we, are, we are local, yeah. but um, he's from India, so he came for three months. Ashok nearly died, but he's not planning to tell his wife about it. My mother-in-law, she doesn't know, and the reason we don't want to tell her, because um, we're afraid that she, she might not let him in again in the beach, you know? <laughs> what she doesn't know doesn't hurt her. Nah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or your dad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wanted a couple of young, fit uh, Bondi lifeguards to shoot with, so... They chose us for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> a few days um, before the photo shoot, I had some physio done um, with some suction cups, and um, basically my whole body was just a big bruise, and uh, um, I was looking absolutely terrible for it. But Whippet has his own image problems. He had a spare 10 minutes before Heidi Klum's arrival, so he's bolted out for a surf, and uh, he's actually got stung across the face by a blue bottle. After mocking numerous people yesterday for it. <laughs> um, uh, when she came down to Bondi expecting to do a photo shoot with three lifeguards, she was expecting like a couple of six foot plus good looking blokes. And instead, she got me and Whippet just looking at our absolute worst. <laughs> just put that sloppy wig away. <laughs> well, when I walked out, this little American lady, she was like, Did you get those bruises from trying to save someone's life? I was trying to nah. Once lifeguards reassure Naira's wife that her groaning husband will be OK, she finally relaxes. Thanks so much, Lou. No worries. <laughs> As we're getting a photo, he just kind of drags me in and um, just like, put a kiss on my cheek. He's, you know, he's very appreciative. Yeah, I went to lunch. Oh, I'll send something to Yeah, OK. Oh, no worries. We'll just send something to have a look. Yeah, thank you. No worries. An older man is lying on the beach, motionless. What was it? Someone passed here. See that guy in the blue shorts, like, just straight through there? Like, he's in a weird sort of like a fetal position almost. <laughs> Years earlier, a similar situation faced by lifeguards ended in tragedy. I might just walk down there, eh? Just see, he's been like that for a while. It's like one year ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, As I'm approaching this guy, unfortunately the thought that first came into my head was um, a story I've heard down here of one of the lifeguards about 10 years ago, approaching a guy on the beach in a similar situation and he was dead. 
and you don't want to think the worst, but it kind of just naturally happens. Looks like an older guy. We're just in an awkward position, I think. So he's he's having the best nap ever. I can't believe he pulled his nap. Yeah, I couldn't win. The worst result was he was dead and had to deal with that terrible situation. The better result, which is still not a good result, is I wake up a guy having to sleep on the beach. So, yeah, I was in a bit of a pickle, really. <laughs> Buddy, why'd you wake him up from his nap? Yeah, he was filthy. His, his words were quite nice, but the look he gave me was just daggers. He really wasn't impressed. <laughs> he was just in the middle of just a perfect afternoon nap and fatty woke him. Yeah, we got some funny jobs down here and some stuff that definitely falls out of the lifeguarding realm. He's bumming. He's, He's just in a bag, <laughs> He's was on his lunch break. <laughs> He's like, oh, my lunch break. We've still got 20 minutes left. I was like, so sorry to wake you up. It's what makes it interesting, the ones that just come out of you out of nowhere, so. They're different. The rescue victim may now be safe, but he's a little confused about who the camera crew are. I did promise my family I'd be on the Bondi rescue. Same thing, yeah? I just wish I was asking about Bondi, bro. You guys be there tomorrow? You be here tomorrow? Nah, it's Bondi. Are we down for a great Bondi now? And then it's Coronola? No, this is Bondi D. Serious? Yeah, this is Bondi D. I thought he was in Cronulla. That's a 30 kilometre. Different train lines and everything. Like, that's a. <laughs> He's way off course. Are you supposed to be in Cronulla? Yeah, bro. You okay, mate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. So I thought my wife was bad with directions. That is like next level. The rescued surfer could now be in much bigger trouble. Luckily, the only casualty is the boat captain's pride. <laughs> I was having lunch in the back room and I heard people roaring. <laughs> it wasn't the ride Brazilian surfer Jose was expecting. Pretty bumpy coming in, but all good now. There's absolutely no way through there. It's just rocks. Then it goes into the bogey hole, so it was, they were gone from, uh, from the start. I've never seen that in uh, 34 years of life living here. I haven't seen that done before, so it was pretty impressive. <laughs> it's the first time I rolled the thing in five years. Oh, man, it was a good day to do it. It's a great day to do it. Obviously, a lot of people around the coast of Walk have seen it because the fire brigade, ambulance have all been called. But um, now it's all over. Everything's OK now. All over, except for an uncomfortable march past Harry's. Who's the captain who's signed off? Who's down with the ship? <laughs> When you rescue someone, there's no real etiquette, there's no signage on the board that says the you know, correct way to get on the board. Lie down, lie down, lie down. Lie down, here we go, lie down. No, not like that. <laughs> the woman, Georgia, takes a laid-back rescue technique, which could be referred to as the sunbaker. She's sunbaking on her back. Can I just took it on board. I thought it was funny, and I knew when I was paddling in, there'd be a lot of commentary coming from that lifeguard tower. Make sure you stay close to shore next time, OK? Then straight away, I had to go back out for another person. You right, buddy? OK? Up on the board, mate. Up on the board. Come here. I'll take you in. Harrison has a chance to show Hoppo that the previous rescue was just a one-off accident. That guy jumped on my board and straight on their back. It wasn't ideal, especially, you know, like, first, first time, you know, you get led away with it, but second time, Alarm bells start ringing. I love it. That, that would only happen to Harrison. Best ever. Yep, the guy's in the same position. I love it. <laughs> this is gold. Harrison's trying out a new rescue technique this afternoon. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I think Harrison's going to be uh, on his own here. I think it's going to be a, a Kiwi technique, and that's all it'll be. We just come to Bondi to swim, but it didn't really go as planned because the waves are very powerful. <laughs> and uh, so we came out and tried to uh, keep ourselves occupied by digging a hole. <laughs> it's just what we do on the weekends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go, man. <laughs> well, you're done.
<laughs> Whenever something strange is happening at Bondi, Bondi's strangest lifeguard, Harry's, is never far away. Give it her coladas. Cross <laughs> here. This is true social distancing. What you do is drop a couple of drinks off to keep you hydrated. All right, you're the face of Bondi now. As well as saving lives, Harry fancies himself as an expert in beach science. He said, "What's pressure? Because the meter squared is one ton. Yeah, so it doesn't look like much. So now when people dig out two meters squared, you know, yeah." <laughs> a little bit of experience came into play on the way back in and Harrison nailed it like a seasoned veteran and Ryan got smashed like a rookie. No. Ah! <laughs> He's in the barrel. <laughs> in front of all the guys, you want to impress them and all that and Definitely one of the things not to do is um, no stop with a patient, that's for sure. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is, some more. <laughs> you okay? This is a hospital case. Yeah, he's definitely had sushi. Put it moving, you wouldn't even be able to see your hand in front of your face, let alone being able to see Dory or Nemo or... What's Nemo? Bruce. Bruce. <laughs> Bruce. <laughs> it's your name. Hugo Pufflet. What's it? Hugo Pufflet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you won't believe this quick name. You go puffer. You go puffer. You're fair income, we're us up. Dead shoes. So it's gone quite a fair bit down, hasn't it? Feeling woozy at all? Nah. What are you doing? Mm. Just remember we got that barbecue right now. It's all right, mate. OK. The volleyball's at the question. Fabio has dislocated his shoulder. No, can you just move? Nah, we're not allowed to. Oh. <laughs> Oh, maybe in the back. Oh. Now it's stuck there. Is it back in? Hope so. Yes. That was pretty good. Thanks for your help, mate. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Weird joint. You know, I thought it'd be best if I just get, gave her a bit of a present, a culture exchange, and showed her what the emu and kangaroo can do. Harry's, of course, wanted to have a go, and I thought, well, do I let him have a go or not? And I thought, why not? Come here, Harry. Amazing, this is my dream. <laughs> there we go. That is so odd. It sounded like the music on the Titanic when it's about to go down. <laughs> <laughs> it was like I'd just blown like three or four balloons up. Keep an eye on the beach from where they are. Harrison heads back to the skate park, where Milo's situation has improved, thanks to the green whistle. He was loving life and the green whistle. <laughs> Having the time of his life at the moment. Concerned that Milo may not remember all of this, his mates, Ollie and Harry, capture the moment for social media. So sweet. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah, he's. All right, your ambo's here. Don't worry. Oh, oh, that hurts. Oh, yeah. Ah, keep breathing on the green one. Keep going on that. Sit back, sit back, sit back. You have just to hold that one. Oh, Derek, it was lovely to meet you. Yeah, lovely Thanks. to meet you too. Lovely to catch a wave. Sure. Love Thanks, to do it Derek. That was really good. Yeah. Thanks, mate. You want a kiss, bro? No, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Derek. I really came so close. <laughs> Jethro and Chase are ocean testing an experimental surf craft while they're off duty. On that particular day, the surf was pretty big. Um, we weren't scared, but we were certainly a bit nervous. The chair was too far back. The weight distribution was all off. We had eyes on us. We were just capsizing left, right and centre. Oh, 